What is good C squad? Today we're watching the first episode of the Hasbin Hotel. I know I'm late, but who cares? And if you want to see more Hasbin Hotel, then like and subscribe. But real quick before we start, I am doing a $200 giveaway where two lucky people will win a $100 gift card of their choice. And all you need to do to enter is make sure you are subscribed and comment down below your Twitter handle or your Discord. That way I can get a hold of you if you win. But wait! If we can get to 230,000 subscribers by March 8th, I will throw in another $100 gift card for someone to win. So instead of two winners, it'll be three. Winners will be announced March 8th. Lucifer was one of these angels. He was a dreamer with fantastical ideas for all of creation. See, I already like the way that the show is presenting Lucifer. Instead of being a hellish asshole, he's actually not a bad person. Now, obviously we're hearing this from Charlie's standpoint, so it could be a little bit swayed. Also, I should probably mention, I haven't watched Hasbin Hotel, the pilot since it like came out. Hasbin Hotel pilot, four years ago. Are you kidding me? I feel so old. I thought it came out like two years ago. Jesus. Equals as the first of mankind, but despite this, Adam demanded control. Damn, you're telling me sexism was a problem even when the earth was first made? God damn. Offering the fruit of knowledge to Adam's new bride, Eve. Evil finally found its way into earth. Because of a fucking apple? What? Is that like actually in the Bible? I haven't read the Bible since I was like eight years old, but is that real? Also, wasn't it in like Greek mythology that same thing happened, but with Pandora's box? Like Pandora's box was opened, which let the evils out into the world. Is that what this is based on? Lilith thrived, empowering demon kind with her voice and her songs. That's so cool. So Lucifer wasn't even the one that built up hell in the first place. It was his wife. Now that's already a really cool concept because then Lucifer's kind of like the good guy. That's cool. Oh shit. Did you hear all that? Uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, was Charlie's eyes always red? I don't think it was. Look, I love the pilot so much. So I'm not going to try and complain too much. I know. Don't worry. I enjoy your theatrics. Are you okay? There's like a massive storm going on right now. I'm sure you can't hear that through the mic. I just hope what I'm trying to do here will work. It will. I've always liked Vaggies and Charlie's like relationship. A lot of relationships that you see in shows, a lot of times they're half toxic, half supportive, but Charlie and Vaggie are super supportive and super sweet. Do you like blood, violence, and depravity of a sexual nature? Of course you do! Oh my god, I'm so happy. Alistair is easily one of my favorite characters in all of media. Like, I'm not just saying he's one of the best characters in the show. I mean, he's one of my favorite characters ever. When I first saw and heard Alistair in the pilot episode, instantly I fell in love with his character. Also, real quick, did you see that? Every time Alistair moved his hand in frame, the video feed got like staticky. I don't know if that's gonna be important later on. Riveting conversation with our singular resident. Wow, all this and more. I love how like poorly made this advertisement is. It makes sense because Alistair was from, I don't know exactly what year the radio was popular. I'm gonna assume somewhere in the 1950s, maybe even 1930s, but I just love the attention to detail. Like it makes sense why this advertisement looks so sloppy. Ooh, maybe that's why he can't be seen via camera. Maybe. Bad. The word you're looking for is bad. Funny, I was going for hilarious. Is Alistair's voice different? Yeah, Alistair's voice in the pilot had way more of a radio effect. I thought maybe I was going crazy for a second there. Honestly, I kind of like it. It's easier for me to understand what he's saying. I actually like the change. Everyone remembers me from my radio show, the proper medium to express oneself. I just love the way that Alistair moves. I love the way he talks. He talks in such a classy way. The way he talks makes you forget that he's a demon. Sorry, scratch that. He's a demon lord. He's such a fascinating character. Alistair's like that perfect mixture of intriguing, fun, but also in the back of your head, you have to keep in mind that he is a demon and he will kill you. But you insisted on this noisy picture box advertisement. So I had a little fun with it. Oh, I'd also love the attention to detail that the TV that Alistair uses is an old fashioned TV. It's not like a new one. Talented celebrity you have right here. Angel, 
you're a porn star. I'm not gonna lie, I thought Angel Dust was a woman for the longest time. My bad. If you film me going at it with Mr. Fancy Talk Creepy Voice here, never going to happen. <gasps> oh man. I like how they did like a little callback to the pilot. Editor, play the clip. And what can you do, my effeminate fellow? I can suck your dick. Ha! No. Your loss. In all honesty, I never really liked Angel Dust's character. I hope there's more to Angel Dust. The gag reflex, the holes, <laughs> the chest fluff, everyone thinks uh, her tits. What that thought? Oh, Charlie's picture for her dad's caller ID was cute. Why do you think I'm here? You actually think I'd be cleaning bottles and listening to you? Ah, I don't know how I feel about Husk as new voice actor. Look, I love Keith Davis. Don't get me wrong. Is it Husk or Husker? Husker's old voice actor from the pilot was just so perfect for his character. It just hurts, man. Again, I have nothing against Keith Davis whatsoever. It just feels corporate, you know? Now, am I just complaining because it's episode one? Yes. Obviously, I'll grow to love Keith Davis's voice as Huskers. Whiskers. Call me Whiskers whiskers again and I'll jam that bottle down your throat. I'm not trying to be negative, but like right there, Husker's old voice actor would have sound way more threatening where Keith Davis's voice just has that sweet sound, you know? He has that smooth type of voice, like that jazzy type of voice. Whatever means I can keep crashing here rent free. Crack is expensive. What? Oh yeah, isn't angel dust like another word for crack or cocaine? Can I say those words on YouTube? <sighs> What's going on? That was such a great random face that Charlie just made. And do this, somehow I know it. I'll get heaven behind. I was just gonna mention the fact that Charlie just started singing out of nowhere. Did you just see that? Editor, replay the clip. Veggie just disappeared for like a whole second. Was that intentional or was that on accident? I don't mean to pick on the animators, but that was very noticeable. And touch their hearts or whatever angels have. First off, Erica Henningsen has one of the most beautiful voices I have ever ever heard in my life, which is one of the reasons why I fell in love with the pilot was because of her singing voice and just the way the music was in general. But something just came to me. Isn't Charlie Hellborn? Like Charlie was never human, right? So what does that make Charlie? She's not human. Every street's so revealing, it's hard not to stare. <laughs> what did I just see? Actually, why am I even questioning it? It's fucking hell. I'm so happy to finally be watching this show. You guys have no idea how long I've had to stay off of TikTok. I didn't want to get spoiled with anything with this show. And now that I'm finally able to watch it with you guys, oh, it feels so good. If I can show them the dream I've dreamed that any soul can change. Am I the only one that kind of gets that Disney slash Pixar vibe from this musical? I don't know if it's because of the blonde hair from Charlie. She's giving me that Rapunzel vibe from Tangled. Like what was that one song from Tangled when Rapunzel was singing like early in the movie, wanting to go see the lights? That's what this song is reminding me of and I don't know why. Look, if your music is being compared to prime Pixar, prime Disney, that's a good thing. From the porn studio where the cinephiles go to- Oh my god! That change in like tempo by both Charlie and the instrumental, that was amazing. The pilot had one of the best displays of modern musicals I've ever seen. And already in the first song, this show is already blowing me away. I'm so happy to finally watch this. And I don't give a crow that his brain's got in my eyes. And again, I just love that Charlie's voice actor can just change her pitches so fast. So as a viewer and a listener, it like constantly keeps your attention the entire time. And I love it. It's so good. I love it. You think I'd come down there? <laughs> no, I mean, I love the vibe. Totally. I love your tunes. Pretty fucking hardcore. Don't get me wrong. I'm already loving this character's like delivery to all of his lines, which is a great thing. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I'm already loving this character's like whole demeanor. You can tell that he's an asshole and he has power and whatever and he's abusing it. Also, what is this face from Charlie? A video camera. All right, let's do this. Does this sound like Vaggie's voice actor is really trying to like lower her voice too much? Like right there, it just sounded like Vaggie's voice actor was trying to go way too low. Let's do this. And you could like really notice it too. I don't mind female voice actors who have a low voice, but you could tell her voice actor was trying a little too hard right there. And I've noticed that like a few times before, but that time it was like super noticeable. And Hus, can you maybe not have the script in front of your face? I ain't no actor, I can't memorize this shit. <laughs> I like that, get it? Cause he's a voice actor. Huskers isn't a voice actor, but Keith Davis is. Hell, I would say Keith Davis is probably one of the best voice actors in the world. I'm fucking Adam. I'm the original dick. <laughs> I normally don't like dick jokes, but that one was clever. That's the original guy. So does that mean he's like the most powerful angel, like, 
in heaven. Oh no, because there was angels before that that made the earth and then made Adam and Eve. So no, never mind. He's not. Mr. Adam, sir. Call me Dick Master. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can already tell this character, Adam, is going to be a shithead, an awful all-around character, but you can tell he's going to be one of those characters who's going to be just really funny no matter what, simply because of his delivery. Like, these aren't even super funny jokes. It's just that the delivery is perfect. A genius. I mean, your words, babe. Who would really love to put his name on something? Fucking love putting my name on shit. That's literally just Elon Musk. I'm ready. Action. Um, what? That was just so random. Let's roll again. Okay, action. Can Nifty just not like talk in front of a camera? Does she have like the same problems as Alistair? Well, not problems, but like side effects. Now that I think about it, I don't know a whole lot about Nifty. I'm pretty sure the pilot didn't talk much about Nifty besides she likes the clean shit. Because it won't be so entertaining to watch over an empty hotel, will it shit ass? Fair enough. I just love Alistair's reactions to everything. One of my favorite quotes ever was from the pilot, and it's when Alistair said, <laughs> Smile, my dear. You know you're never fully dressed without one. That quote has always stuck in my head, which is why I always try to smile a lot whenever I'm recording videos. But I also just love Alistair's response to everything, even when he doesn't say much. Remember, Alistair is a powerful demon, one of the most powerful demons in hell, and yet he's always classy about everything. Everyone makes mistakes. Angels don't make mistakes. You really think that? Oh man, so I already see where the story is kind of heading to. They think they're worth more than everybody else. I wonder in this show, how the rules work like if you're already in heaven can you just do whatever you want since you already made it like no matter how bad you are in heaven can you not be brought back down to hell It'll be a happy day. let me stop you right there oh. save us all precious time okay. if what you're saying oh that bass that bass line that just came out of nowhere oh that was great let me hear more please uh. sorry sweetie but there's no defying their fate because hell is forever whether you like it or not can I just mention that Adam's design seems way more hellish and demonized than anything in hell. His character design seems way more terrifying than Alistair's. There is fear and I for it I Alex Brightman. Adam's voice is perfect for a rock song. Also, that's another thing that I love about this show is that each song can be completely different. It's just... Mmm, so good. They're burning for their lives until we kill them again. He just said that until he kills them again. What happens when you kill someone that's already in hell? Is it like the final death from Coco? Like they're just gone completely? Like even their soul is gone? Honestly, for the first episode, that was pretty good. Like I already knew this show's musicals would be great. I already knew the characters were also going to be great as well. They didn't really have to change much from the pilot, but I love that the first episode is digging more into the lore of the show and like different characters like Lucifer and his wife. I'm very intrigued to see more of the other overlords in hell. But yeah, anyway, have a good rest of your day.